In this video, I'll show you how you can get started building super lightweight background services using the .NET Worker project template. These can then be run anywhere on Windows, on Linux, and even in a container. Welcome back to our channel. My name is Chris Roberts, and this is Roberts Dev Talk. Now the worker project template is quite a new addition to the .NET SDK, but it's something that I believe is quite transformative. Workers can easily be configured as Windows services, also as Linux daemons, but they can also be run standalone in a container. Now from a web development point of view, this is really quite interesting because any kind of task that you normally do in the background, like sending batches of emails, generating documents, moving data between systems and database backups, that kind of thing, can now be implemented in .NET. I'm using the worker project template more and more in my client projects and in my own work, so I decided to make a short video series about it, which this is the first episode. Over the next few videos, I'll be building out a background service that monitors a message queue for new order information and then sends out a confirmation email. I'll be implementing logging with Siri log, task scheduling with Coravel, and then later on I will create a Docker image which I will deploy on a DigitalOcean droplet using Docker Compose. So if you're interested in any of those subjects, please do consider subscribing and tap that notification bell to learn when we upload the next video. Now in this first episode, I will show you how to scaffold a work in Visual Studio 2019 and in VS Code using the .NET CLI. So let's first dive into Visual Studio 2019 and then we'll come back to VS Code later. So from the Visual Studio 2019 home screen, select Create New Project. Now under Search for Templates, type Worker Service. At the top we'll see Worker Service, an empty project template for creating a worker service. If we select this and click Next, we can then add a name for our project. So we'll just call it Order Processing Worker VS 2019 and then we'll click Next. Now we've got a couple of different .NET SDKs installed, so we can actually choose which one we want to target. I will choose .NET 5, which is current, but notice we can also choose .NET Core 3.1. This will work as well. Now one of the benefits of creating a worker through VS 2019 is it can actually create our Docker file for us if we want to be able to support and deploy through Docker. We just need to tick Enable Docker. We can choose the OS of the Docker image you want to use. We'll leave it as Linux and then click Create. Now Visual Studio has created our worker for us and notice it's also created a Docker file so that later on if we want to deploy to Docker we can do. We can also select to debug directly in a Docker container or we can debug the worker directly using the Visual Studio debugger. Now one of the things I love about .NET is it is completely cross-platform. So you may not necessarily be developing your applications in Windows. With that in mind then, from now on, I will be using the .NET CLI and Visual Studio Code. As a prerequisite, you will need the .NET SDK installed. Any version from 3.1 and upwards is absolutely fine. Also, I'd recommend that you install the C Sharp extension for VS Code because this gives you IntelliSense, C Sharp debugging and code completion. With that, let's dive back into the .NET CLI and scaffold out a new worker from there. From my favorite terminal, I'm going to ensure I have the correct .NET SDK installed by typing .NET dash dash version. And we'll see here that we're currently using the version 5 of the .NET SDK. Now this command will also work with .NET Core 3.1 as well. So I'm going to run the command .NET new worker. And then I'm going to add the parameter dash O for output. And I'm going to call our worker order processing worker. I'll hit enter. So the .NET SDK has created my project for me. I will change directory into my new order processing worker folder. Then I'll run code dot to run Visual Studio code in this folder. Now, because I've got the C Sharp extension installed, it's prompted me, do I want to add required assets to build and debug my project? So I'll click yes. And then the C Sharp extension will create my VS Code folder and a launch.json. This will allow me to debug the worker directly in Visual Studio Code. So let's take a quick look around our worker project. As you can see, it's very simple. It's just a couple of settings files, the CS project file and two C sharp files, program and worker.cs, which contains our worker. Let's have a look first at program CS. Now at first glance, this looks like a normal console app, and that's because it pretty much is. A worker is just a .NET Core console app with the host builder added. This means we get access to a DI container, the service collection, out of the box configuration, and standardized logging and so on. And the worker is just another service that's been added into the container using the services.add hosted service extension method. This means that when the application starts up, .NET Core will take care of starting our worker for us. So let's have a look at the worker itself. 
Now, as we can see, our worker is quite a simple class too. It's just based on the background service base class from the Microsoft extensions hosting package. It has a constructor that's called once by the container. And then in our sample, it just has one method execute async. This is called after the worker has been started up and it will contain most of our logic. As you can see, the out of the box example is just a simple while loop that runs indefinitely while the stopping token is not canceled. This cancellation token will only be cancelled when the application shuts down. There are also a couple of other methods on our base class that we can override to control the life cycle of our worker. First of all, we have start async. This is called when the worker starts up. We also have conveniently stop async. This is called when the worker shuts down. This means we can subscribe to life cycle events of our worker. So for example, we can perform some asynchronous initialization code in start async, and then we can do some nice cleaning up when stop is called. Now it's worth noting that this class stays alive for the duration of the application's runtime. So we can store some state in the background inside the class. For example, we can add a private field count. And inside our loop, we can change our message to worker has run count times. We can also put a log message inside our start async. And we can say worker starting. We can put another little message in our stop async that says worker stopping. Also, let's not forget to increment our count each time. So if we go to run and then start debugging, our terminal will open and we'll start to see the output from our application. We see our worker starting message and we can see our count is being incremented every second. Now, if we send the shutdown command to our worker, we'll see the worker stopping message. So this demonstrates the lifecycle events of our worker and how we can store state within our worker class. As you can see, the worker project template is really flexible. You get dependency injection and standardized logging out of the box. And the background service base class itself is a good starting point for building services. However, it is quite low level. So in a web application, if you wanted to do some more complicated scheduling, for example, if you wanted to send out a batch of emails every evening at six o'clock, except on weekends, then you'd have to write quite a lot of boilerplate code yourself. So with that in mind, in the next video, I will be replacing the default worker implementation with the Corovel task scheduling library, which gives us some really nice scheduling features with a Fluent API. So subscribe if you'd like to see that video. If by the time you watch this video, I've already uploaded it, I will update the description below with a link and also pop a link up here as well. Thank you so much for watching. Comment below if you've got any questions and if you've got any ideas for future episodes like this. Drop a like if you've enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next video.